pill chart, there's an L more than Well, with an L. <laughs> We are live. <laughs> hey, everybody. It's JJ and Lucas. What is going on? I'm from UpDownGrowLab.Live. Lucas is from Pill Chards, P-I-L-C-H-A-R-D-S, Seed Company, uh, Caviar, etc., and so on. Uh, Lucas is in Portugal. I'm obviously on the West Coast of the United States. And uh, this is the midday smoke for me. It's the evening smoke for Lucas. It's about uh, 9.30 there now, right? 8.30. 8.30. Yes, My yes. bad. I, con I must confuse you because I keep on jumping back and forth between uh, uh, Portugal and Spain. And even though, though both countries have a border, uh, the, the time zones are different. So I'm constantly jumping one hour back and jumping one hour back. So it's an hour difference, but right? Yeah, between Spain and Portugal, there's one hour difference. And today I'm visiting a friend in Lisbon, and man, check this view. Oh, wow. Like, this is the castle of Lisbon, and it's beautiful here. Wow. This is, it's, it's such a nice city, man. It's really, really nice. One day I'll get there. One day I'll get there. My invitation still comes true. Oh, I know. Well, my wife also speaks fluent Portuguese, you know. Why does she? <laughs> what is she? <laughs> no, why does she? Like, why does she? I, 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 uh, she, <laughs> she lived in Brazil for about five years when she was uh, between like 17 and 20, 21, something like that. And uh, her father, um, I'm sure nobody from my family is watching this, so it doesn't really matter. But my, my father-in-law, scumbag that he was, may he maybe rest in peace, I'm not so sure. Um... He basically went out for a pack of cigarettes uh, and never came back, cleaned out all the bank accounts, took all the money, chased some broad to Brazil in 1955, and left my mother-in-law with five kids between the age of, like, five and 15, and no fucking money. Um, and so I, my, my brother-in-law, my oldest brother-in-law, who has passed, he moved down to Portugal, and he ended up working, he ran a restaurant, he ended up working for Varig Airlines, blah, 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 blah. So my wife... For whatever reason, she followed her older brother down to Brazil. And then his her, <laughs> her old man's girlfriend threw her out of the house. So, you know, she kind of made her own way. I mean, I got to give props to my wife. She's a fucking... <laughs> she's fucking pretty indomitable in her own way. You know? well, honestly, like, speaking Portuguese is a big skill. I've been spending quite some time here for the last four years. Right. And... I must confess, my, my Portuguese is much too limited compared to what it should be, given the time that I've been here. Yeah, but you also speak German, Dutch, and English, right? Yes. So, I mean, yes. what the fuck? <laughs> I mean, maybe yeah, you're better at Northern I European languages. Uh, no, I don't need any more of those. They are too similar to Dutch anyways. But, uh, but I really would like to improve my port and yours, so a mix of Portuguese and Spanish. Um... That, that would greatly help me uh, both in my career and my private life as well. And it's, it's always good to learn a new skill. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Portuguese, I mean, Portuguese is, you know, Brazil, man. <laughs> Brazil, that's all I can say, Brazil. You like to surf? You go to Brazil. You go to uh, yeah. Florianopolis, and it's not the waves like they, not huge waves, but there's a, there's a surfer community down there in Santa Catarina. And it's beautiful, bro. We went down there. We were down there. We went down there two years. And I don't surf, but uh, the beaches were fucking gorgeous. And there's a lot. And yeah. the really funny thing is, there's a fuck ton of Germans down there, bro. Yeah, okay. Then I, I need to avoid this place. Like, Germans have... Well, they're... But they're I'm Germans like, from, like, the 1800s. They came down... Uh, the Portuguese king made land grants, I think, to German uh, immigrants to farm the south southern part of Brazil. Yeah, so, I've heard that. And there's German down there, like a really funny German that sounds like 150 years ago. Yeah, it's kind of archaic. But uh, okay. there's a whole town there that's, you know, it looks like fucking 1890, 1880 Germany, I believe. I can't remember the name of the town. And then, of course, after the war... <laughs> You know, a lot of people fled to, to uh, Argentina and South America. But this, these people were there way before the war. 
And there's a ton of Italians down there also. Italian immigrants. Descendants of Italian immigrants. So it's very interesting. You know, you go to southern Brazil. Well, it, you go to southern Brazil and there's all these like tall, blue or green eyed, you know. I mean, I noticed the women. I wasn't really paying attention to the fellows. But I mean, the stewardesses on our airplane, they were all like 5'10 and gorgeous. You know, that's where Giselle Bunchen is from. Well, to be honest, I barely know any nation where people are that beautiful, as beautiful as in Brazil, very commonly. Um, one second. And in regarding the Germans there, yeah, that it's interesting. I mean, I'd be curious to see it. But to be honest, there are so many different places that I would like to see first without having a lot of German culture around me because I grew up in that culture and I really want to get to know new stuff and new cultures. Well, I, I mean, I didn't. We didn't see. We didn't see him running. We didn't see. We didn't hear a lot of German being spoken in Florianopolis. So, if that eases your mind okay, at all, a, because that's for example now in Europe, uh, Portugal is one of the only countries that has opened up already where you can travel again. And for me, it's somehow a little bit weird to walk, walk around the city and have, hear Germans at any, every other corner because I don't. There's a reason why I don't live in Germany. Anymore. Right, I right. I want to new culture and learn a new language and not be where all my fellow Germans are. Right, right. I get it. I get it completely. I mean, you're there for the total immersion experience. You don't need any anybody from the uh, from back home showing up on your doorstep unless you ask them to. Exactly. <laughs> especially in summer, I usually have guests like 80% of the time. And most of these guests are either from the Netherlands or Germany. Right. So I, it's not like I avoid Germans. But I understand. I try to go to different places. And I, I'm pretty sure my next location for non-business related long destination travel will be Indonesia. Indonesia. Mm, get some Ristafel. Yum. Yeah, like four to six weeks sobering out and lots of surf and nice waves, warm water. Just sounds lovely, yeah. So what, you would go to one of the outlying islands or the main, the what is it, Sumatra? Yeah, is that the main island, Sumatra? No. No, we would go to Bali for sure because the waves there are best. Of course, of course. And I've, only, I've only surfed in warm water one day in my life and that... Such a difference well, that you have to. One day you've surfed in warm water. On, excuse me. Just one day. Surfed in warm water, yes, because the Atlantic Ocean is freezingly cold. So the average water temperature that I get to surf in is around the uh, wait, uh, plus thirty-two, to around seventy-five to eighties. It's chilly. It's, it's, chilly water. Yeah, yeah it's, it's cold. So where did you surf in warm water? Uh, in Barcelona. We had one nice day in the summer that I, where I, when I was in Barcelona, so like two, three years ago, I was there in summer, and usually you never have waves in summer, uh, and somehow the, all the odds came together, and there were some waves. We came to the beach with like 10 friends, we were about to smoke one, turn around the corner to the beach, and I see these waves. Man, I, I never ran in flops for more than a mile until this day but I ran home all the way grabbed my board ran back <laughs> to the beach all the way and went to the water straight away and I didn't leave it the water for like three hours because surfing in warm water is amazing I'll bet I'll bet swimming in warm water is amazing then you have something to do with waste <laughs> it was the radioactive waste flowing into the water of the Mediterranean was it the Mediterranean must be huh yeah. Flowing into the water of the Mediterranean, you came out and you were glowing, literally. Yeah, it's a real bummer. <laughs> I went there when I was 11 and for the first time, and man, the water back then looked like the tropical. It's like proper, proper, clear, crystal clear water. Very, very nice uh, color, lots of fish. If you go in nowadays in summer, you have more waste and plastic in there than fish for sure. Definitely. I remember when I went to Barcelona the first time for Spanibus, we stayed on the outskirts. Um, it was like almost the last stop on one of the tram lines, but it was on the beach. 
and uh, it was not really that attractive. I mean, the ocean obviously is beautiful, but the beach didn't really interest me that much. When nothing happens there. <laughs> it's like a big lake. Exactly. The water is just black all, all the time. It's so boring. Exactly. What Very is, quiet. It's big, big kitchen joint again. What's that? What, you, what strain are you smoking there? It's, it's I gotta be honest with you. I don't know. It's something I grew. I can tell by the trim, I believe, but I have no idea what it is because I lost the, the label. It may be the Crunch, which is a uh, granola funk crossed with uh, the Boricua, although I don't think so because it doesn't have a strong, doesn't have a real strong smell to it. So I don't think that's what it is. I'm not sure what it is. I got, and I, I'm, I'm, lately I smoke very easy flour, usually with very low THC in like 15 to 18% or something. Right. Because I, I want to get stuff done, I want to work a lot, etc. And yesterday for my birthday, I got... Happy birthday! Uh, Thank you. Everybody wish uh, Lucas a happy birthday. Thank you. Uh, got some presents by friends of mine. And obviously they don't give me the boring stuff in their eyes, but they all give me the really nice hammer stuff. And all. Man, I, I, I had to stop working in the afternoon because for some reason suddenly I was bust out lying in the sun. Like, oh, <laughs> You're supposed to do that for your birthday. So, uh, Sifu says, skip and jump to Morocco. <laughs> as soon as the borders open up again, that will be one of my first goals. I've never been to North Africa. Never been there. Food, amazing. Is People, it? Amazing. Yeah. Waves, amazing. Landscape, amazing. And then inside the mountains... I only I have been there. I only heard it, but you have these reef mountains where you have hectares or acres and acres and acres full of, of nice yeah, growing plants. Right. Yes. yes. Interesting. Like I guess eighty nine percent of the Europe the hash that gets consumed in Europe gets produced <coughs> there. I believe it. I believe it. Jazz and Kelly, what's up? Uh, what do we ask? Marble Falls. I'm just reading some comments. Typhoid. It's hurricane season. It will be hurricane season, and it's the water is definitely warmer in hurricane season. Is it warmer in hurricane season? Well, here it's in the summertime, and but it go. It's been. It's It's getting longer and longer uh, with the with you know the weather changing. Lots of happy birthdays, Lucas. Cosmic Thank Ray, you. Sifu, Typhoid, Jazz and Kelly, Cat, and Jim says, lunchtime! <laughs> Apropos of nothing. You're right. This is my appetizer. My appetite stimulation, stimulator. Yeah, to be honest, now that I'm not by the beach, and then it I'm inside the city it's properly warm so I really need an appetizer other, other, other ways I don't get hungry properly I didn't do sports today right I, I only stay in the heat come on well you definitely got a sunburned nose brother yeah I really try to avoid it I, I use lots of sun blockers but man I'm a, I'm a German potato <laughs> I'm a, you're, a, you're a true white boy yeah like look at my look at my nose I, I really put effort into putting sunblocker everywhere, but it, it just doesn't help. You gotta cover that shit, man. You gotta like glue a fucking mask on top of your just your nose. <laughs> yeah, I, Don't feel bad. My nose is about fifty percent bigger than yours. It's all good. It's all good. It's Pinocchio. Yeah, right. <laughs> Turn it to 12 12. We'll get some flour off of that sucker yet. Oh, my goodness gracious me. Cosmic Ray. Somebody says the. Uh, Cosmic Ray says the location in the old Prisoner TV series. Do you ever. Are you familiar with that show with Patrick McGowan? Called The Prisoner? Okay, it's a real cult favorite. Real interesting 
supposedly it was near Portugal. Could be. Who knows? I don't know. It would be cool to get seeds from a Moroccan land race. Well, they're different kinds of plants, bro. They're not what you're used to indoor uh, kind of thing. They're really made for hash growing, not for the, you know, it's a different kind of thing. Right? Yeah, and I'm, af yeah, and I'm afraid Morocco, at least for what I've heard, is quite a difficult place for land races these days because like 20, 30 years ago when the first Dutch guys started going all internationally oh, with yeah. seeds, Telling them, hey, here you got perfectly feminized seeds, just flower those. They did, and then everything cross pollinated with the land races. So you have highly mixed up land race trains over there. And in general, it's very, very difficult to get high quality, proper land race trains these days. Plus, every land race train needs to be grown in the same soil with similar climate conditions to really get the max out of this plant. Right. It's, it's very difficult to maintain a, or to get the max out of a, out of a land race train if that comes from 2,000 meters up on the mountains if you then grow it on sea level with 110 degrees heat in the summer. Well, that's sort of the difference between stuff that's grown like in Denver, in greenhouses, and in California, you know, in the Central Valley. It's a similar kind of uh, predicament or situation, I guess. Uh, but, but, but actually, somebody sent me, mysteriously kind, hi. Uh, somebody sent me some beans from uh, India, uh, India or Pakistan, I think. Uh, somebody who yeah. was in the British Armed Forces, um, a buddy has collected like a, a, ha a bunch of them, and he sent me some. So I haven't cracked them yet. But I, And one of the reasons is precisely for the reason you sit, stated. They're kind of corrupted. difficult part and then it gets really difficult to distinguish what's a good or a natural land race strand and what is not right I mean, it's it's the same story in colombia like in colombia you have lots of land race strands that are from originally from there but it's difficult to distinguish seeds that really come from a prof from a legit source where only this land race strands is involved and not some other genetic has cross-pollinated over the years as well should we blame Ariane for going to all those places? I don't blame anyone. Don't blame anyone. <laughs> and to be honest, I get them. Like, I, I get everyone who where, where people come by and tell them, man, if you use this seed, you will get a much nicer product. Of course you use it. Right, right. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm fooling around with the sound, and I, I'm not going to do it now, but I think I'm going to switch up... Um, something going forward because the your sound is very low okay do you use a headset when no, you right talk on the I'm phone not I'm, no i'm not because i'm uh I'm not at home right now and i forgot everything but you do have one yeah i do okay so next time use that the sound quality is a thousand percent better okay all right just a heads up so you're in Lisbon now. You're not in the co you're not yeah, in uh, yeah. wherever you we live regularly. Cool. Yeah, in the tiny beach village. Now I'm, I went to Lisbon for my birthday. I got friends here, and uh, decided to stay with one here. And it's very it's a very chill place. It's a very very nice city that reminds a little bit of Barcelona, but you don't have social clubs here, unfortunately. Well, you don't have as many tourists, right? Oh man, there are especially until COVID, there were lots and lots of tourists. Oh, well, Portugal, because Portugal is open. And, yeah, and Porto and Lisbon both got uh, elected for some of the best tourist destinations in Europe lately. So, for the last three, four years, there has been lots and lots of tourists. I didn't know when I moved here. I thought, <coughs> hey man, I moved to the wild west of Europe where there are no tourists, and I will be one of you cool Germans who go, <laughs> go there. Right here, there are only other Germans, French people, Scandinavians, all those around me again. Cry me a river, brother. Cry me a river. <laughs> oh, my God. So Nico says, even Morocco now has more hybrids and almost no land races because of the Dutch genetics. 
<laughs> Benny Loco says, is the thumbs up broken? If not, smash it. Thank you, Benny Loco. I appreciate the love. Oh. What do you say to the Amazon decision? What do I say about what? Amazon decided not to do drug testing on their employees anymore. Well, I think it's awesome, but I also think it's self-serving. I mean, they want to start, they want to get in the weed deliveries business. What do you think about that? Because that's at the core of my question is exactly that. What do you... Well, I think, you know, look, listen, I, I would rather have my weed delivered to my front door than have to go out and get it, to be very honest with you. Um, not everybody lives in a place where that can be done without somebody fucking stealing it off the front porch or whatever. But uh, I, I, I don't like the, uh, I like the convenience, but I kind of, it kind of scares me when a company like Amazon that's worth almost a trillion fucking dollars... <laughs> You know, they could buy, uh, you know, multiple cannabis entities, you know, and they just take over. Them. I mean, they could buy a couple big Cali dispensaries that are multi-state operators, and they'll be like Whole Foods. They'll be fucking everywhere. Whole Foods will have a fucking they, annex where you buy your fucking weed. They could literally buy all the industry. They could buy any company... And they wouldn't spend a percent of their entire equity. Well, that's it. That's it. And, you know, and it's only going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, I mean, look, he's fucking going to the edge of the, the galaxy or the, the whatever the fuck. He's flying up to space, right? In a month? Yeah. Uh, these guys got more money than Croesus. And it's, um, no. you know, that's my fear. And, you know, you hear about... Uh, there was that boycott thing that we were talking about last week, all these, these companies that are not supporting home grows and things like that. And I know DNA Genetics is getting a lot of shit. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what their position is one way or the other. But um, there was a post today on the Adam Dunn's uh, thread or stream or whatever the fuck, page, I don't know, on Instagram. And it was he was comparing... Uh, Instagram breeders to Spotify rappers. Uh, and it was really funny. I mean, it was very interesting. I mean, I see his point, but he's definitely stirring up some shit. <laughs> so he says that some breeders buy followers in which to, to see bigger, to appear bigger and appear to be more important than they actually are. In order to, yeah, in order to become more successful. Oh, is that a thing? I didn't even know that was a thing. Is that a thing? That's what people are doing? Music. In rap music, uh, because YouTube clicks and uh, Spotify play clicks become, have become that important, it's a big thing nowadays to buy listens. So you have some 10,000 Spotify accounts somewhere that listen automatically to one track. And if you want to buy 10,000 listens, you pay a couple of dollars. <coughs> and if you pay a couple of hundred dollars or thousand dollars, you have a couple of million clicks. And then suddenly... Suddenly, you, you, suddenly you've you arrived. Are, yeah, suddenly you are in the top 10 of the charts and everyone is like, who is this guy? Honestly, we could try it. Maybe it would be fun. Jay <laughs> Kitchen launches a song <laughs> next week randomly just any kind of crap and we buy some clicks for it and we see whether you end up in the top one uh, <laughs> interesting interesting I don't know the whole buying yeah, of clicks thing seems so fucking dishonest you know I <coughs> totally agree with the point then I, I really think it's it's just a natural process in a business environment that companies start to uh, to grow grow bigger to unite and uh, put together their force but at the same time in our industry especially given the rather sad history of our industry over the last century I, th I feel like it's in the consumer's responsibility to take part in shaping this industry for a more sustainable and more legitimate approach and every consumer can decide it's totally it's our totally free and liberal choice to decide do i want to order cannabis from amazon do i want to order cannabis from a farm that is united in some big ass group that works against home growers or do i want to support businesses 
that help small uh, small growers and help other small businesses in order to arrive at a proper and sustainable cooperating industry. And equity is and very important also, you. you know, the equitable piece of it's very important too, you know, uh, social equity in terms of trying to make yes. amends for the fucking uh, criminalization of people over the last 80 or 90 years, you know. Um, yeah, I'm fucking high, man. <laughs> Jason Houlihan says, Lunch was glorious. Wonton soup, chicken teriyaki. Got your MSG on, bud. <laughs> Wild Bill Chop today. Very nice. Neil Ford says, Wanking. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. Is he? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Sifu, like all big business, they want to control all of industry. Yeah, it's fucked up. Small tubes, what's up? But that's why we make seeds and sell them, right, Lucas? So Thanks people honest, can... I, I mean, you know, they, you probably weren't around when this uh, forum called Overgrow was in existence. Are you familiar with it? I... I know the name but I yeah i mean i you know i got on a couple of times when it was when it was around but i really wasn't a big uh, a lot of the a lot of the guys in their 40s and mid 40s they were big on it and that's how a lot of those connections got made um between those cats like the guys from dna and cali connection and Roy dankness all those fellas i think i think um but uh it's basically you want to overgrow the fucking, <laughs> the fucking whatever, the prohibition against cannabis by whomever. Private industry, government, whomever the fuck. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of people complaining about this Amazon thing and, oh, yeah, Amazon is such a big, uh, big and nasty company. I don't care. Like, if I personally, I don't buy much at Amazon because I don't like them. And I think that's everyone's personal decision, but that some dads and moms and other people will not have to go to work terrified of losing their job in future, but they can go there and know, okay, I won't have a drug test here. I think that's awesome. And every step towards a more just society like this is nice. I would concur. Absolutely. I mean, it's such an intrusion. You know, they don't test... I don't think alcohol is necessarily a mandatory test, you know? I mean, I think al alcohol is more deleterious than weed in a thousand different ways, you know? It's just fucking bad for you. I mean, in moderation, it's okay, I, I, but... Before I went to university, I worked in a normal German office job for a couple of years, and it was amazing because in Germany, we have the system where you go to school and learn a job at the same time in an, inside an office. It's so it's smart. It's really, really nice. And, um, man, the, in our company, there was an alcoholic, a hardcore alcoholic, and everyone knew. But as long as nothing happened, no one cared, because, hey, he was an alcoholic, so, yeah, if he goes out for lunch, drinks three beer, I don't give a shit if, as long as he treats his, his customers properly afterwards. Right. But, but for some reason, with other drugs, it's directly, oh, yeah, you risk the entire, the, the same Right, if you go smoke a joint with your fucking, uh, you know, your your sandwich at lunch, you're, you're not only stigmatized, you're punished. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And then are jobs that if you have a drug test on you, uh, or if you, if you fail a drug test, um, you lose them because you, you risk by using a machinery or something. And, but if you are a medical patient, you are not allowed to use this machinery without being under influence of your medicine. So you need to smoke point. <laughs> That's crazy. That's nuts. I was going to say something, but I forgot it. The weed is, the weed is getting to me. <laughs> what will you have for lunch today? Uh, I have some crab meat, actually. My wife, she goes to the Chinese grocery store. Uh, it's not a grocery store. It's a fucking supermarket. Uh, and they have packaged crab meat for, uh, it's usually on sale and, uh, it's quite good. You know, I mix it up, make a little, I'm trying to, trying to lose a little weight. So I just don't, uh, I only eat very sparingly of like carbs, like bread or uh, pasta as much as I love that shit. I usually have it with dinner, but I don't try not to eat much of it. So that's basically what I'll have for lunch, you know, with a little mayonnaise, you know. Okay. Then I, I won't suggest what I wanted to suggest 
<laughs> which was that we are planning to uh, start some streaming as well and do some different kinds of stuff and one of these things will be that we go out for food in nice restaurants smoke uh-huh. a joint drink a wine and we could have one of these streams during our stream so you get to see oh we can do that streams. we can do that I don't give a shit that's fine man I love doing okay. that that would be fucking dope okay then it will take until probably August until the whole crew is down here again because now we are all separated over the whole continent right but in August they're all down here and then we would start these projects and I think that will be nice no that will be that will be excellent definitely that will be uh, I- that will be great for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, well, we're trying to do more. I mean, we're trying to get Mara to come in every Saturday night. Um, you know, we've got Rachel and my, my partner from New York, Tweezy. They're on every couple of nights. Um, people like the diversity of uh, voices, you know. Hippie spinach. I mean, I think what people don't like is me not being able to shout people out all the time, right? But, um, you know, it comes with the territory. Uh, so Wild Bill says keto. I can't go total keto, bro. I can't do that. I'm not. I, I need some carbs in my life, man. <laughs> Fuck it. Is keto diet without any kind of carbs? It's all complex carbs. You know, um, a lot of I don't know about raw food, but you know, a lot of meat, a lot of protein. I believe. I'm not super familiar with it, but I believe it's a heavy. It's protein heavy. Okay. You know, a lot of nuts, shit like that, which I can't eat, so, you know. Well, I mean, I have, you know, it's really funny, man. Uh, the older I get and the more, you know, I've had Crohn's for like 50 years, the fucking, my diet options fucking narrow like a triangle. It's like, fuck. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. Once in a while, I'll, I'll do some some significant cheating, and I'll pay for it, but... You know, there's a Portuguese or a Brazilian s- s- seafood soup called moqueca. You ever had it? Mm-hmm. It's made. Uh, so, yeah. It's made with coconut milk and palm oil and seafood, and it's fucking amazing. It's so savory. For me, it triggers all the endorphins in my brain. They just go fucking crazy. Uh, and I, we used to eat it when we would go to Brazil, and. Uh, I've never really had a good one up here, but I found someone put a recipe in one of the local newspapers, not local, but one, some newspaper, which I clipped out, and it seems pretty straightforward. So at some point, I'm going to give it a shot. Uh, nice. Fuck it all. <laughs> yeah, we really feel, uh, start feeling that our diets shift uh, between summer and winter here. Because in, in summer, it's so warm. I, I, I rather you don't stick eat. to vegetable habits. And maybe yogurt in the morning, etc. And in winter, and if, especially during the lockdown, there's not much you can do. Like you're at home, you cook. So we always cooked like pasta with bolognese, and then the bolognese for nine hours on the stove and the stuff. <laughs> yeah, nothing else gulash. to do, right? Yeah, exactly. Like goulash for nine hours or twelve <laughs> hours on the. On the oh stove. fuck! I know. My, when I go back to that. To eat lunch, my wife is going to want to know what are we eating for the next like three or four or five days, right? So I got to think about fucking menu plan. I made beef stew last week, which actually turned out all right. I did burn it a little bit, but so I don't know. Gas or electric? Uh, we use gas. We use gas. I, I hate cooking with electric. I hate it. Well, there are uh, new electric ways that... It, like induction or something. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. Know the English term. Where you you need special pots that are magnetic, and then it's like gas. My parents have it. It's really hot. Yeah, it's it's very very interesting. <coughs> interesting, interesting. And you pick up the pot afterwards, and it's not hot from the bottom because it's it's some magnetic thing. Like the the whole pot doesn't get much warmer than it just gets warmed up. Well, <laughs> the question is, what does magnetic what what does the magnetic field do to your head, your feet, your food? Yeah. I know you know people are going to be asking that shit, right? The magnetic field is going to be fucking brain damaging you or some shit or sending fucking weird. Who the fuck? I've been smoking pack of cigarettes half my life. I really don't <laughs> give a f- anything about 
radio waves. Like I, I grew up with a phone in my pocket. I don't care. I, <laughs> and you still got your junk, I, and it still works. Shit hasn't yeah, fallen off like yet. I, I, like there are so many risks. I can run into a car tonight. I'd rather enjoy my life, and I'm, I'm happy with the food I get to eat. Most definitely, most definitely. Well, it is about that time, man. So uh, it's been awesome as usual. Uh, enjoy the rest of your evening in Lisbon. Are you guys going out? Yeah. Like we got <laughs> of course. Silly before fucking before question. Before the restaurants close here because it's still a curfew. Like the, the restaurants have to close at 11 p.m. or something. So one and a half, two more hours maybe. Um, and yeah, definitely for some dinner, some drink, and then get to chill. Nice, nice. Well, uh, we'll see you next week. Uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. We really appreciate it. Uh, I'll be on tonight. Sweezy should be calling in. It'll be 8 p.m. Pacific. Uh, and uh, stay lifted. Roll your bong. Sharp.